ton of useless objects are piling up in this corner. Nothing interesting. I guess that's the reason the neighbors left them here. These benches, fountains, and statues are in a ramshackle condition, whereas the vegetation in this park is almost completely recovered since the catastrophe. Well, if that proves our failure as a species. It's a sculpture from my poster. Maybe it was an allegory of happy fatherhood until the great wave turned it into a depiction of Saturn devouring his children. The blades of this contraption must have stopped turning months ago, and I don't think doing without it is the owner's biggest problem right now. From what I heard, all telecommunications collapsed in the catastrophe. It seems like it took the great wave only a few seconds to turn all of our technology into scrap metal. There's a piece of paper stuck to the door, and it looks like it has a handwritten message on it. Let's see what it says here. Who could Sarah be? And this Chris, could he have something to do with the person I saw in my vision? The front door of this apartment has been reinforced with various locks and bolts. Despite the surveillance by the soldiers, the people who live in this building must be terrified of burglary and looting. Of course, it's locked. And I think it's better if I don't try to pick the lock. I could be mistaken for a burglar, and the last thing I need right now is for someone to call the guards patrolling this area. There's a metal plaque on the wall next to the door. Michael Argent, photographer. I can't believe it. This is the apartment of a man named Michael, an apartment located above the Beechwood Oracle bookstore, and in the building where the photograph on the poster was taken. Can all this really be a coincidence? It's hard to believe, but is it possible that the voice in my head has been guiding me to my own front door? There's no time for you to go back to your nest, rat! That ignorant bastard is starting to get on my nerves. Yes, I do have to be going. By the way, how did the chase go? Were those cats too quick for you? You'd better go. It's not in your best interest to get my partner any more agitated. Not tonight. You shut your mouth, you rat, or I'll shut it for you! I won't warn you again! Those beasts are possessed, and I'm going to exterminate them, one by one, with my bare hands if I have to. I'm sure that would make you the pride of the force. Just one more thing, try to stay away from the trash cans next time. I've warned you, you filthy rat! You've worn out my patience! Ow! This'll teach you to treat me with a little more respect! I'm going to wipe that stupid grin off your face! Ouch! This is the only language you shitheads from the refugee camp understand! So, you're going to treat me with respect now, aren't you? Come on, leave him alone. You'll kill him. He is a mole after all, and it's in our interest to keep him alive. Come on, let's get out of here. Well, you're safe for now. But I have a very good memory for faces. Another day, I'll finish what we started, rat. I swear it. Uh, uh. These stains mark the spot where that bloated psychopath knocked me down with his flashlight. Now I can say I've made my mark in this new world. Wait a minute. In all that blood, there, there's something white. It's a fragment of one of my teeth.
a reminder of my clash with the soldiers in case my memory fails me again. Like an absurd bowling match, that sack of fat in a uniform knocked over these cans in his frustrated pursuit. An army flashlight. And of course, I suppose it doesn't have any. Yes, it has batteries. And it works. Huh. Will this change my luck? Wait a minute. I'm not going to climb down any further. It's totally dark in there, and it would be crazy to go into these sewers without any light. Okay, here goes. I'll turn on the flashlight before going down any further. Great. These tunnels are a real labyrinth. And I'm afraid that the map on the cleanup brigade's GPS only shows the city at street level. There's no reference to the sewers in the GPS. I'd better turn back before I get lost. This could be very dangerous. Let's see what this room actually is, with a little light. One of those electrical panels that control the different lighting phases in a building. The majority of the circuit breakers are broken or ripped out. All but one. All right, I'll flip the switch for the only circuit that's not blown. Hmm, I think I hear the buzz of electricity coming from the surface. I only see empty detergent containers and a beat up old electrical panel hanging on the wall. Everything indicates that this was a maintenance room from a long, long time ago. A few powerful spotlights light the contents of the depot. This place is glowing like a gold mine right now. that guy again. It's like a loop that keeps repeating over and over again. A damn nightmare that repeats over and over again. Before I go down, I'll leave the heavy stuff here, in case the rope doesn't support my weight. Okay, I'll use the bucket for what it was designed for, to be filled with water.
I'll get my stuff. Here goes. Maybe we can still salvage something from the fire. Now that the fire is out, I don't intend to carry this rusty bucket around anymore. I'll get rid of it. Burned remains of clothes, books and toys. That's all that's left now of the bonfire I'd lit. It sends shivers down my spine to think that this hunk of plastic belonged to little Colin. It's a sinister image, considering the boy's fate. Is this here? Mm. How? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm not proud of what I'm about to do, but I need to find out that secret Rose is keeping from me. And if she wants her baby, I'll give her back her baby. I've brought you your baby, Rose. Did you bring me my baby? Did you bring him? Thank you so much, Mr. Sleepyhead. You kept your word. You brought me my baby. Now I need you to tell me that secret you promised to reveal if I brought what you asked. Yes, our secret. I have something that belongs to you, Mr. Sleepyhead. It's the key that opens your chest of dreams. And now, it's yours again. But it's a real key. Well, where did you get it? I found it in your jacket after Rod and his wife gave me your clothes. When I got to my room, the key fell on the floor and made a clinking sound. I had just seen you sleeping in their trailer like a big bear. And then I figured it out. It was the key to the chest where you were keeping your dreams. Because you like to dream, don't you? Of course you do. That's why your name is Mr. Sleepyhead. The key that opens my chest of dreams. Thank you very much for your help, Rose. Take good care of your son. I should be going now. No, please. Don't go. Don't leave me here. Now that I've found my baby, I have to get away from here. Far away. I have to get away from the haunted castle. If you leave, more men will come and hurt me, and they'll lock me up in the dark again. And I can't stand the dark. That's when those soldiers come back and take me with them. And now they'll want to hurt my baby, too. The hunter was clear. I mustn't get mixed up in his affairs, or there'll be hell to pay. I'm sorry, Rose. I can't do anything. Mr. Sleepyhead, I can't stand it anymore. Don't let them touch me again. Please help me. You have to get me out of here. Like the knight in the stories. You're my knight, and I'm your princess. Oh, good God. This is unbearable. Victims and executioners. It sums things up. And what was I? What was my role before the Great Wave? Damn it. I can't just leave that poor girl to her fate. I have to do something to save her, even if I don't know what that is yet. I'll help you, Rose. I'll help you get out of here. Thank you, Mr. Sleepyhead. Do you promise? Will you be my knight in shining armor? Yes. It's something that belongs to you, and it's from before the Great Wave. That's what Rose said. The key that opens your chest of dreams. Let's see if my intuition is correct. 
Yes, the key that opens my chest of dreams is a key that in fact belongs to Michael Argent, photographer. The key to my own apartment. The outside of this closet is covered with photos cut out of magazines and newspapers. It looks disproportionately huge in this tiny apartment. A somewhat antiquated model of an instant camera. Despite its appearance, it seems to be in perfect working order. I only see one problem. It has no film in it. This must be the corner where I did my least complicated photographic jobs. Just a white backdrop and these two shattered lamps to light the scene. It's the backdrop I used for the photography I did at home. It's hanging down from that wooden beam, held in place with screws. No, I'd only rip it if I tried to pull it down without first taking out the screws. I don't see how I can use the tooth fragment with this. I don't think I'd gain anything by using this here. Whoever designed this building didn't go to too much trouble to conceal the structural elements. There are pillars and wooden beams all over the place. A line of tiny screws holds up the white backdrop that hangs from the crossbeam. Hmm. The corner of a photograph peeking out of this old music box. It can't be. It's me. This photo. I remember it. I remember this photograph. Please, Michael, help us. Only you can do it. And this woman is... She's Emily. She's my wife. Now I remember her. The person who's been communicating with me all this time. Emily. I love you, Michael. And I now pronounce you... Don't ever leave me. I won't. I have something to tell you, Michael. Are you... Uh, are you really? Oh, yes! Things are not going well between us, Michael. You know that. It's only a rough patch. You'll see. It's all your fault! You have to get on top of this, Michael. It's destroying both of us. I'm afraid of you. Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> Everything will be different. Remember that vacation we took to the beach? When we were getting to know each other? Everything will go back to the way it was. Promise me. I promise. Oh, Emily. What does all this mean? Where are you? How can I find you? What are these messages you keep repeating in my head? I've lost my mind. I've lost my mind. That, that's the only logical explanation for this. Oh, Emily. My poor Emily. Where are you? How can I find you? This melancholy music makes my hair stand on end. I seem to be hearing the sad voice of Emily in every note. Where are you? How can I find you? As dry and as empty as the contents of my memory, I see various liquor bottles scattered around the room. That explains the odor I find so unbearable. It's exactly the same view of the park and the statue that appears in the photo on the poster. No doubt, this must have been one of my simplest and most lucrative jobs. I completed it without even leaving the house. It has a multitude of little drawers, all labeled in alphabetical order. The existence of something so logical and orderly in this place surprises me. Judging from the state of my place, I was obviously a rather messy person. Alexander Tribune. That's the name of this newspaper. Now I understand. This file cabinet holds copies of newspapers and magazines my photos appeared in. It seems like as a photographer, I was very fond of my own work. Central Outrider. The title of this publication appears in the front page. 
Benton Heights Post, one of the many newspapers stored in the filing cabinet. Cottage Times Register, that's the name of this newspaper. Central Outrider, the title of this publication appears in the front page. Disney Banker, one of the many newspapers stored in the filing cabinet. Dauphin News, that's the name of this newspaper. Empire Point Magazine, the title of this publication appears in the front page. Elk Grove Echo, one of the many newspapers stored in the filing cabinet. First, I'll put the newspaper I took back in its place. As much as I might like my old photos, I have no intention of carrying around any more paper than necessary. Elk Grove Echo. It's one of the many publications I was saving inside the file cabinet at home. Tomorrow comes today. I bet that insurance company never imagined what was in store for us when it created that poster. Mills International Informer. That's the name of this newspaper. First, I'll put the newspaper I took back in its place. As much as I might like my old photos, I have no intention of carrying around any more paper than necessary. Mayfair Torch. The title of this publication appears in the front page. News and Reviews. One of the many newspapers stored in the filing cabinet. Ocean Drive Explorer. That's the name of this newspaper. Objective Wanderer. The title of this publication appears in the front page. First, I'll put the newspaper I took back in its place. As much as I might like my old photos, I have no intention of carrying around any more paper than necessary. Objective Wanderer. I don't see anything noteworthy in this local newspaper, except for a pair of excellent photographs. A shelf with photos, discs, and dozens of books in every imaginable size and color. This must be the repository for a big chunk of Michael Argent's personality and tastes. What for? None of these titles means anything at all to me. It's like looking into a mirror and seeing a reflection you no longer recognize staring back at you.